Item Number SCP-5914 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures SCP-5914 is kept in a secure insectoid container in Site-141's Euclid Wing. Three members of personnel with a cognitive resistance score of 6.7 must be present when feeding, one member to insert the live crickets, and two members to observe and reaffirm SCP-5914's position. Currently, there are 10 SCP-5914 instances within the container. Update. Testing Chamber 0772 is to remain sealed until further notice. Description SCP-5914 is an anomalous species of black and yellow garden spider. Distinct features include an unnatural size compared to non-anomalous counterparts and the absence of the tibia in the hind legs. Footnote 1 Between 20 and 38 mm in length, approximately 7 mm larger. SCP-5914 passively imposes a cognitive effect on nearby life forms. Those viewing it will become unaware of its exact location after looking away from it for a brief amount of time. This will persist as long as the viewer is unable to locate it through assistance, i.e. verbal direction. SCP-5914 Test Log Upon containment, entry testing began to confirm the anomalous effect present in SCP-5914. The procedure involved one D-Class subject in Testing Chamber 0772, whereupon SCP-5914 was freely released. Six Site-141 personnel were present for observation and post-test retrieval. Begin Log Zero Minutes D-2012 is sat in the center of the testing cell, blindfolded. Observing personnel run their final check on the Digital Cognitive Bypass Scanner, or DCBS, before giving the cue to release the SCP-5914 specimen. 5 minutes. The SCP-5914 specimen is brought into the room by a member of security. He sets down the cage and promptly leaves the room. D-2012 is startled by the noise of the cage hitting the floor. 6 minutes. The cage is opened remotely by observing personnel. D-2012 is told through the intercom to remove their blindfold, which they do. 7 minutes. D-2012 visibly squirms in their seat, raising their legs off the ground. They yell out that they are not comfortable with the test and request to leave. The request is denied. Dr. Lothrop makes a verbal note of D-2012's arachnophobia and to later add it to their profile. 9 minutes. Dr. Lothrop asks D-2012 to look away from SCP-5914. D-2012 refuses. The request is made again and D-2012 refuses, commenting on the size of the specimen and shrinking back into their seat slightly. 11 minutes. Two personnel hold a discussion on how to progress with the test while the rest observe SCP-5914. It remains still. 12 minutes. A severe thunderstorm warning is issued for the area. 13 minutes. Dr. Lothrop makes a proposal to D-2012. In exchange for their total cooperation for the remainder of the test, they may request additional amenities for their holding cell. D-2012 hesitates for a moment, then requests a new bed. Dr. Lothrop agrees. 15 minutes. D-2012 is asked to look away from SCP-5914. D-2012 complies, closing their eyes and turning their head away. Their breathing becomes heavier. 18 minutes. Dr. Lothrop instructs D-2012 to open their eyes. As they do, they look around the room. They ask where SCP-5914 is located. Lothrop informs them that they will be told after a set amount of time. D-2012 asks if it is still in the room. 20 minutes. Personnel operating the DCBS confirm and relay that SCP-5914 is in the room. D-2012 crouches on their chair. 23 minutes. Personnel come to a consensus regarding SCP-5914 anomalous effects and prepare to inform D-2012. 24 minutes. Dr. Lothrop speaks through the intercom and tells D-2012 that the test is now complete. Before he is able to disclose SCP-5914's location, lightning strikes nearby Site-141, and the power goes out. 25 minutes. 
Backup generators activate and emergency lights power on. D-2012 is panting, still crouched on their seat. Personnel are unable to confirm SCP-5914's exact location. Dr. Lothrop presses further, but no personnel can confidently answer, all stating that it was too dark to see. 28 minutes. A member of personnel begins rebooting the DCBS. Lothrop asks D-2012 to remain calm as technical difficulties are being resolved. They ask how long it will take. No one responds. 31 minutes. DCBS boot-up sequence at 15%. D-2012's legs visibly shake. They repeat themselves and ask how much longer they will be in the room. No one responds. 35 minutes. DCBS boot-up sequence at 30%. D-2012 demands to be let out of the testing chamber. Dr. Lothrop denies the request, stating that opening the door risks a breach in containment. 38 minutes. DCBS boot-up sequence at 40%. D-2012 states that they feel something on their leg and scratches it. 42 minutes. DCBS boot-up sequence at 55%. D-2012 begins scratching their arms. They remark that they think the specimen may be crawling on them. Dr. Lothrop informs them that this is not the case and asks that they calm down. 45 minutes. DCBS boot-up sequence at 65%. D-2012 continues to scratch their arms and legs. They state that their throat feels dry. No one responds. 48 minutes. DCBS boot-up sequence at 75%. D-2012 coughs and scratches their neck and head. Tears well up into their eyes. They can be heard softly whimpering. 50 minutes. DCBS boot-up sequence at 80%. 54 minutes. DCBS boot-up sequence at 85%. 59 minutes. DCBS boot-up sequence at 90%. D-2012 is covering their mouth with their hands. Their muffled sobs can be heard through the intercom. 1 hour, 1 minute. DCBS boot-up sequence at 95%. Dr. Lothrop assures them that it won't be much longer. D-2012 slowly nods their head. 1 hour, 3 minutes. DCBS boot-up sequence completes. Operating system startup begins. D-2012's legs are shaking as they struggle to maintain their crouching position on the chair. 1 hour, 4 minutes. Operating personnel immediately initiate a scan of the testing chamber. SCP-5914 is pinpointed to be on the left front leg of D-2012's chair. After the confirmation, the specimen can be clearly seen by all present personnel. A member of security is sent in to retrieve D-2012. 1 hour, 9 minutes. Security enters the test chamber. D-2012 sobs become louder. They state that they can't see the spider. Before Dr. Lothrop can instruct security, she openly says the location of SCP-5914. 1 hour, 10 minutes. D-2012 looks down at the chair leg. They scream and jump off of the chair, kicking it backwards into the chamber as they run to security. They are promptly escorted out. End log. A scan of the testing chamber after the conclusion of the test revealed that SCP-5914 had clung to the chair as it was moved, resulting in the specimen being crushed by the force of the impact between the chair and the wall. As such, the number of living instances has been adjusted from 10 to 40. That's it for today everyone, thank you so much for watching and a huge thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon. Special shout out to my level 4 patrons, Alexis Zagrate, Lesby Friends, Scrubversive, Deja Shade, and Max Loves Ears. If you would like to see your name at the end of my videos, see my videos early, and get some other cool perks, head on over to patreon.com slash drmaxwell, link in the description.